All right, yes. Uh, good evening, all of you. Let us uh, begin with the today's uh, daily news analysis. That is 8th of April, 2023. So let's have a look at the today's editorial. So talking about the important article, uh, so if you talk about this pause and effect, this is uh, the uh, in insights from the RBI's monetary policy. So RBI has said that he, uh, when, when I talk about, we have in the recent session, we have talked about the inflation. So RBI has given its inputs that a uh, lot of uncertainties are going on, especially OPEG. They have cut down their production. Okay, so OPEG, that is Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Okay, so OPEC has uh, uh, cut down its production, and that is uh, hinting towards price rise with respect to the crude oil. Okay, so OPEC it's an organization of the uh, thirteen important uh, uh, mem uh, so thirteen important member countries are there in this uh, OPEC organization, and the full form of OPEC is Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. Okay, so when I talk about this OPEC organization, it was formed in nineteen sixteen. And it plays a very important role with respect to controlling the production of the crude oil and controlling the prices of um, crude uh, petroleum, okay, that is a crude oil. So it is said that the OPEC countries are cutting down their production. So that will definitely result into increase into the oil prices. So further, the inflation is going to rise. Apart from that, uh, it is also being said that uh, uncertainties with respect to the weather conditions. When, I talk, when we talk about the unseasonal rainfall that is being prevalent in the country, that is also affecting the food grains. And this can have impact on the prices of the vegetable and the food grains. So that is the issue. Also, possibility of El Nino, it's being noticed. El Nino, we know that it's a weather phenomena. Uh, the, in the Pacific Ocean, we see that low pressure is being created. Usually, usually what happens, usually in the ordinary condition, okay, we see that in the Pacific, El Nino it is, yeah. Ordinarily in the Pacific Ocean, it's a high pressure phenomena is there. And when we talk about the Indian subcontinent, in the Indian Ocean region, we have low pressure. So what happens? The monsoon winds are attracted from this high pressure condition to the low pressure conditions of the Indian subcontinent. But frequently in the El Nino region, in the El Nino uh, time span, what happens? Uh, the things are reversed. So ordinarily, when we have high pressure, now the current over here in this uh, Pacific Ocean, it's a warm Peruvian current. And we see over here, instead of high pressure, low pressure is being created. And in the Indian subcontinent, when we have high uh, low pressure, usually now it's high pressure. So what will happen? All the monsoon winds will be attracted from the Indian subcontinent, the winds will be attracted to the Pacific region. Okay, so from here, from high pressure to low pressure. So this is called as your El Nino phenomena. Okay, or usually in the Pacific Ocean, you have high, high pressure area. And in the Indian subcontinent, in the Indian Ocean region, we have low pressure. So monsoon winds are attracted towards Indian subcontinent and we have a sufficient monsoon rainfall. But during the time of El Nino, the conditions go on reversing. In the Pacific Ocean region, uh, we have a low pressure that is being created because of the warm Peruvian current. And we see that in the Indian subcontinent, high pressure is created. So what will happen? The wind direction, it will be reversed. From Indian subcontinent, the winds will start flowing towards Pacific Ocean and rainfall, like more rainfall will happen in the Pacific area region. That is, across the Peruvian coast, the rainfall will occur. And in India, there will be a deficient with respect to the rainfall, okay? Less rainfall occurs during the time of the El Nino phenomena, okay? So all these things are mentioned into this article with respect to the RBI's uh, uh, analysis of the monetary policy of the country. So RBI has said that okay, all these challenges are there and that will further result into the price rise into the country, okay? So OPEC country, they have... A cut down the oil production that is one issue second thing we have seen that the unseasonal rainfall that is being occurring into the country and the third thing we are seeing that the El Nino that is being predicted and that can affect the Indian monsoon and further it will reduce the rainfall and can have impact on the prices of the food grains okay so that's it from this article nothing to go into the details of it Today, we are going to focus mainly on the article, which is very much important from the General Studies Paper 3 perspective, that is science for all, okay? 
So it's a very huge milestone event for the country because India has uh, given a green signal. India has uh, approved, that is union cabinet has decided to give approval for the LIGO facility in India, okay? So LIGO facility, it's a very important uh, scientific development with respect to uh, the country's progress in the field of high level science facilities. So union cabinet recently approved to set up a gravitational wave detection facility in the state of Maharashtra. The overall project cost, it is 2,600 crore is the project cost. And this is called as LIGO. So what is this LIGO? Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, okay? So we are going to understand this entire topic in detail, all right? So let us uh, move into the details of this topic. So and just clear this. Yeah. So context, I hope we are all clear with the context. The context is that Union Cabinet has given the approval for the uh, uh, installing or uh, basically for the construction of the LIGO in India, okay? Where it will be constructed, it will be in Maharashtra. To be precise, it's in the Hingoli district, Hingoli district in Maharashtra, all right? Now, when I talk about this LIGO, what is the full form of this LIGO? We have seen already the full form of the LIGO, that is Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. So what is the basic principle? What is the basic work of this LIGO? So the basic work of this LIGO is to detect gravitational waves, okay? Gravitational Base. Now, when I talk about LIGO, what is this actually LIGO framework? Okay, so uh, LIGO framework, it is basically an international network of labs. International network of labs. Okay, so there are different in international agencies, scientists. Okay, more than 1000 scientists are working on this project. Different labs have collaborated. The originally, the project started in USA. The project started in USA. And they decided that we need to create a chain. We need to create an international network of lab. And together, we will be functioning in order to detect the gravitational waves. Okay, The reason being that the detection of the gravitational waves, it's a very difficult task. We are going to understand what are the challenges into it. Okay, So one particular laboratory cannot give you uh, the accurate detections or the accurate readings and as a result you require a chain of laboratories who are working in sync in order to give you the accurate details with respect to your gravitational wave detection so with that perspective there are many international so it's a network of many international labs we are which are working together in order to detect the gravitational waves okay so uh, indian government's uh, decision to make India as a part of this international net network, it's indeed a very big move or it's considered to be a big milestone in the progress of the country's, uh, you can say, advanced science facility. And literally, this is going to take India way ahead, all right? Now, let us try to understand which are the other in international labs, okay? So total, when I talk about gravitational wave detections, total as of now, a total five important detectors are there. Like India will be the fifth one. Up till now, we have four only. It will add India. India, if the uh, the facility, the, the moment the facility will be started in India, it will be the fifth one, okay? So uh, when I talk about the four, which are the four, okay? So we have two in USA. Two in USA. So in USA, there are two. One at um, Hanford, that's, that is in Washington. And the second one is at Livingston, again in USA only, Livingston, okay? So these are the two important uh, facilities which are there in USA, okay? So these are the first two. When I talk about the third one, third one is the Virgo. Virgo, it's in Italy, okay? Uh, then the fourth one, fourth one is Japan's, uh, Japan's um, uh, observatory is there. That is the uh, fourth one, that is Kagura, okay? Kamioka gravitational wave detector. Okay, so that is Japan's one. And India is going to add the fifth one. Okay, so uh, the fifth one, and probably this is going to be the last one. Okay, and that is, and India has been selected for this. 
Now, reason for selecting India is India's geographical location that is uh, uh, playing a very important role. And as a result, India uh, taking into consideration its geographical position. Uh, so it is being said that the India has been opted as the fifth one. Okay. So remember this, when I talk about LIGO, it's a consortium of the countries coming together. International labs together are functioning in order to detect the gravitational waves. Okay. Total five facilities are total five labs are there. Four are already established. One, two are in USA, Hanford, and uh, this is yeah, Hanford and Livingston. Third one, it's Virgo in Italy. Fourth one, it's in Japan, Kagra, and the fifth one, that is the last one, it is supposed to be built in India. Okay, and for which union cabinet has given the approval that yes, India is going to uh, start the construction of this facility all right and the budget is 2600 crore okay so budget is 2600 crore and it is expected that the facility will be operational by 2030 so by 2030 the facility will be ready it will be operational okay now let us try to understand uh, let us go into the details of this gravitational wave okay let us try to understand why are they important and why this project is considered to be a very important uh, event all right so let us try to understand uh, the significance of this project and first of all about the gravitational waves okay so i'll clear this part yeah so uh, when we talk about the concept of gravity we all know that the concept of gravity it was given by newton right so newton he gave the gravitational laws and he was the one who introduced the concept of gravity that is in universe the objects bodies attract each other and he has given the formula for gravity so the formula for gravity is mass of the two bodies so any two bodies which are there in universe they get attracted towards each other and the force of attraction is gravity okay so the formula given by newton as we all know mass of the two bodies so gravity is directly proportional to the mass of the two bodies okay m1 m2 divided by the distance square okay the square of the distance of these two bodies that is your uh, the force of gravity okay so what is the force of gravity as stated by newton uh, any two objects in the universe uh, they exhibit the force of attraction towards each other and the formula for this force of attraction is given by newton m1 into m2 that is the mass of the two bodies experiencing the force of attraction divided by the square of the distance between them okay so this was given by Newton. After that, we see that now there were different issues like why these bodies are getting attracted only. Okay, why in the universe uh, only the force of attraction is there? There could be a possibility the the particles are going away from each other. Why only attraction? Okay, so these fundamental questions were there with respect to the Newton's uh, equation and the Newton's law of gravitation. But uh, for many years, these things were unanswered. Okay, then finally with the onset of Einstein. So Einstein was the one who did a great research on this entire concept of gravity. And he was the one who strengthened the concept of gravity by giving the different uh, research framework on the gravity. Okay, So he worked on the principle of gravity. And because of Einstein, the work of the gravity was strengthened. Okay, So Einstein gave the reason why this um, attraction occurs. Okay, So I'll be just showing a, a small diagram from which uh, the things would be clear. So uh, uh, Einstein said that the space is like, space is like a trampoline. Okay, so it's a trampoline and is there. So a figure it just shows only one body. Okay, a uh, one ball is there. A celestial object is there. Okay, the second figure you can see over here it's like a big uh, and assume that this base is a trampoline. Okay, so whenever a big body comes which has a greater mass with respect to the first body. So what will happen? The trampoline will go down. It will create a path of curvature. You can see over here. So this is just assume that Einstein said that this is a space, okay? Whenever a body with a big mass comes into a particular space in, in the space of that universe, okay? What will happen? Because of this mass, it will create a path of curvature and it will go down. So what will happen? It will go down because of its mass curvature will be created and definitely the another body which which has a less mass it will be attracted towards it okay so it will be attracted towards it and that is the reason behind 
why only gravitation uh, why only attraction occurs okay because definitely no two bodies can have exactly similar mass okay we will always see that the slight difference is there and what will happen the body which has a greater mass will try to create that curve the path of curvature and hence the other body will be attracted towards it okay so uh, einstein did a lot of research with respect to it and different uh, theories were given to it the next important thing what einstein said so this was the first um, result of einstein the second important thing he talked about it's like whenever uh, even if you go uh, if you see about a boat okay if you see the principle of boat so whenever boat moves in water body it creates a ripples okay so boat whenever it moves in water body it creates a ripples on the similar manner when we see that any objects okay when they move in the space they also create that ripple so in space so in water just like the movement of boat creates ripples in the water water body on the similar line in space what happens whenever a body moves that create ripples and these ripples are nothing but your gravitational waves okay so just assume that the gravitational waves are nothing but the ripples in this space okay so gravitational wave if you want to define so these are invisible ripples in invisible ripples in space and second important thing they travel at the speed of light okay they travel at the speed of light okay so we know that the speed of light 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so in the similar manner gravitational waves also they travel at the speed of the light and these are like the invisible ripples in the space which are there okay but there is one speciality of these gravitational waves the speciality of this gravitational wave is that whenever it passes through any body okay whenever it passes through any object what it will do it will uh, do the work of squeezing and stretching it squeezes certain part and it stretches certain part and this helps us to detect the gravitational wave okay so what is the principle of the gravitational wave remember that these are just like the ripples in the space they're invisible ripples in the space they travel at the speed of the light and third thing they create an impact of squeezing and stretching okay so for example if the gravitational things uh, uh waves they pass through earth so they will squeeze a particular part and they will stretch while moving out they will stretch a particular part okay but the effect is not realized to us because gravitational force is basically a weak force okay it's a weak force and as a result and analyzing its effect it's very much difficult see all these things were given by einstein in theory so for many years whether these things are true or not to observe them that was a big challenge einstein said that he the curvature path is created so the gravity exists einstein said that he gravitational waves are just like the ripples okay they squeeze and stretch the body through which it passed but how to observe them that was a big challenge because gravitational force is a weak force to trap it to understand these waves it's a very sensitive thing to understand it's it's a big challenge and to create that facility was all the way a big challenge in front of the scientific community and it was like whatever uh, the LIGO instruments that have been created, it's basically the years of years of research. After that big research, we see that the, these instruments have been constructed and these instruments are in a position now to basically uh, study this gravitational waves. Okay, Now let us try to understand how this gravitation, when are these gravitational waves produced? Okay, So we have understood that the, what are gravitational waves. Now we are going to understand that how this gravitational waves are when and how okay so let us try to understand when this gravitational waves are produced so gravitational waves are produced uh, in space when a big phenomena takes place okay a big phenomena with respect to the celestial objects okay so let for example the very big phenomena phenomena could be supernova okay so if the supernova explosion takes place now, what is the supernova explosion? I hope we all are aware about it. Like, for example, a star. Assume that this is one star, okay? Now, uh, any star, like sun is a star. Within the star, what happens? Nuclear fusion happens, okay? So, because of this nuclear fusion, what will happen? Uh, pressure will be created in the interior of this uh, of this star, okay? So, a lot of pressure because heat is there. So, heat will create the pressure within the 
within this star okay however there will be an outward outward pressure also and this out uh, sorry this is just a second um, yeah so uh, within the star there is lot of heat that is being produced and this heat will produce an outward pressure okay so this outward pressure will be created okay within the star and one more force which is acting on this star and that is the force of gravity so this force of gravity will be out acting from the outside of the star now this will maintain that equilibrium because what is happening the equal force is being produced inside and the same equal force is exert uh, sorry the equal force is produced from inside that is out outward force is there and gravity is creating a force from outside so basically this inside and outside forces they are getting balanced out okay so the condition is fine but sometimes what happen the issue is that sometimes this star runs out of its fuel so what will happen if there is less fuel in this less fuel in the sense the fusion that is happening it is less the atoms which are there that is we know that two hydrogen atoms they merge to form one helium atom that happens in the nuclear fusion okay but subsequently this um, intensity of fusion will decline will reduce with time so less fuel will be generated so what will happen the pressure will reduce so as soon as this pressure will reduce what will happen gravity it will play an important role because the the pressure which is being there internally which is exerting on the gravity it will reduce with time so what will dom dominate this gravity will dominate and this since the gravity will dominate in this case what will happen this star will collapse and this is called as the supernova explosion so just remember that what is a supernova explosion it is the fallout of a star what is the ideal situation in a star internally the star is burning there is a nuclear fusion that is happening it is creating a pressure in outward direction that pressure is getting balanced because of the gravity which is acting from the outside but a time will come what will happen this fuel will run out the internal pressure will not be that sufficient to balance the gravity once this condition happens what will happen the star will fall out and this is called as a supernova explosion and during this time the gravitational waves are produced okay so this is the first uh, incidence of a uh, production of the gravitational wave okay the second incidence of the production of the gravitational wave is that um, when the, when the merger of two black holes happen okay so if uh, just yeah so first incidence we have seen that is the supernova explosion the second is merger of two black holes so black holes means what basically if any st uh, any particular star uh, star is there whose weight is whose mass is 10 times that of our sun okay 10 times of sun so if supernova of such a star occurs a star whose mass is 10 times more than the mass of our sun if that's in that star if supernova happens that star becomes it leaves behind a black hole okay so black hole it is the most densest it's the most dense point in the universe and like everything goes into it like nothing will come nothing can come out out from that black hole if the light goes into that black hole light will not come out it will be in, it will go into that black hole okay so it's the densest point in the a universe so during when this two black holes okay so then when whenever there is a merger of this two black holes your gravitational waves are produced okay so two important events for the production of the gravitational waves like your supernova explosion and the merger of the two black holes okay so when this things happen the uh, gravitational waves are produced okay now how this uh, lego works okay so let us try to understand this what is this lego and what all components are there in this lego so uh, i'll show you another diagram for this lego i just open it yeah so you can see over here uh, i hope the diagram diagram is visible so in this lego you can see that there are two big arms this two arms they are 4 km each okay so this two big arms which you can see over here 4 km each is that one arm and at, and this arm it's basically a vacuum chamber so vacuum chamber is there in this arms at the end of this arm you can see where your mirrors are placed so these are reflecting mirrors okay very high, 
very high reflective mirrors are there and uh, this is the laser source which is there and light detector is there over here so the most important component of this lego is these two arms detector arms okay four kilometer detector arms so in india when the lego will be made this will be somehow the structure big big this four kilometer arms will be there okay so normal situation is like this no signal is there if the if the gravitational wave is detected okay so this lego it's a very high profile instrument which has the capacity to detect such gravitational waves okay so any such phenomena takes place in the universe this lego has the capacity to detect that gravitational wave okay now when i talk about uh, uh, for the very first time this gravitational wave detection it happened it happened in 2015 so in 2015 in usa that lego is there that us lego it did the detection and for this detection of the gravitational so for the very first time the world was able to detect einstein gave the theory of gravitational waves but after so many years in 2015 scientists were in a position to detect the actual gravitational wave and that happened in 2015 and subsequently 2017 nobel prize was given to the team of the scientists who played an important role into this detection of gravitational wave okay so that it, uh, itself was a very important event that happened in 2015 and subsequently the world community acknowledged it by giving them the nobel prize also if you want to uh, know the name of the personality so ranier mess was the uh, was the important person ranier west was there uh, kip uh, kip thom was there and barry barish okay so these were the people who received the nobel prize for this particular thing okay now what is the principle actually no need to know about the principle of detection of the gravitational wave just you need to understand that ki how it like if if you want to understand how does it wave work it's a very simple principle so basically uh, light light rays okay they will be i'll just write over here it would be easy so light rays basically are released simultaneously into this two detectors okay so if in this two detectors we are releasing the light rays simultaneously so they will be reflected by the mirror so for example this is the laser source which will be producing the light rays into this two arms okay so this mirrors are there what this mirrors will do this mirrors will reflect back that right uh, that light ray simultaneously okay in the ordinary condition but if in case gravitational wave is produced so we in the beginning we saw the phenomena of the gravitational wave what gravitational wave does it squeezes one object and it squeezes and stretches okay so if the gravitational wave is produced what will happen it will affect this two arms so this two light rays so laser source will produce a light ray okay this will be deflected by the mirror but if gravitational wave is produced these two light rays will not receive simultaneously they will not come back simultaneously in normal condition what will happen no squeezing no stretching is there so both the arms okay both the arms will reflect light rays simultaneously at the same speed because no changes are happening no deflection nothing is happening but assume the condition that gravitational wave is released gravitational wave will have an impact okay in universe some phenomena took place gravitational waves are being produced this particular instrument will detect them and it will have impact on this instrument so what will happen because of this gravitational wave that vacuum cham chambers they will undergo squeezing and stretching so because of which what will happen the light rays will not return back at the same time okay there will be phase difference and that phase difference will help us to study the gravitational waves okay so this is a simple principle obviously to say it is very simple uh, it nothing goes but lot of mechanics is involved over here just you need to know these details nothing to go into the much depth of it okay now uh, talking about uh, india where is this project what are the challenges with respect to the project okay so this is all about your project this is all about your gravitational waves now we'll be understanding about uh, uh where in india exactly this project is there what are the challenges uh, with respect to our country now in india the basic issue when we talk about the other high profile projects like we all know that uh, thermonuclear observatory that project 
was uh, announced in India, but it received widespread protest in the country because it may have ecological impact and all. Okay, so in, in, in India, that is the big issue: land acquisition. Because you can see the project is a very big project, so land acquisition it's a very big challenge and all. Uh, also, when I talk about uh, these instruments, now uh, legal instruments are very sensitive. Sensitive to slight changes. Sensitive in the sense when we talk about, they are very sensitive to the earthquake, very sensitive to landslides. Even they are sensitive to your movement of heavy vehicles. Okay, so if the heavy vehicles are moving, even that can produce false reading. So that is a big challenge. So to look for such a place, that was an important thing. So in India, finally, the place that has been selected, that is Aundha Nagana. This is the exact location Aundha Nagnath, it's in Hingoli district, Hingoli district, Maharashtra, all right. So here, when we talk about, uh, first of all, this does not lie in seismic zone. So it does not lie in high seismic zone. So it is not prone to earthquake activities and all, um, not prone to land, landslide activity. So that is a positive thing. So this uh, site has been selected. Uh, next uh, important thing about this uh, landslide, uh, this site is that, Majority of the land in this Aundha Nagnath is under the forest department. So land acquisition will not be a great issue in case of this project, okay? Because majority of the, uh, the land is under the forest department. So it's not that issue to get the land, okay? So these are the important things with respect to this. And also this particular location, it is away from the industrial area. So uh, when we talk about uh, impact on the readings and all, it will not be there. So it is away from the industrial area, away from the railway stations, away from the sea. So we can see that the least disturbances could be there. Okay. So taking into consideration all these factors, this has been selected as the site. Okay. So uh, the important things as we saw that gravitational waves and this entire instrument is very sensitive and slight changes can result into false reading. So because of which this site is being specifically selected, Aundha Nagnath, Hingoli district. It does not lie in the seismic zone, so not prone to earthquake and landslides. Away from the industrial area, railway station and sea, so least disturbances there. And as such, we do not find over your problem of land acquisition because the major part is under the forest department. Okay. Uh, talking about, you know, first of all, why do we need this five, five observatories in the world? five legos in the world because see gravitational waves they are very much sensitive we cannot rely on the reading of one particular lego okay so it is being realized that what we can do we can take the readings from all the five for example a gravitational wave is produced let us take a reading from all the, the all five legos and then do the analysis and then come to the final conclusion okay so from that perspective the legos are installed in the five different places and that is the importance of this legal. So I hope the things are clear with respect to this legal. In India, three institutes will be playing an important role into this um, implementation of this project. So I'll name the three institutes. The very first one is Institute of uh, Plasma Research. Uh, this is in Gandhinagar, Plasma Research. It's in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. So this institute will be there. Uh, the second institute is Inter University, Inter University Center for Astronomy, Astronomy and Astrophysics, Astrophysics. So this will be the second thing. This is in Pune. Okay, Inter University Center for Astronomy and uh, Astronomy and your Astrophysics. And the third important institute is uh, Raj. Ramanna Institute, Raj Ramanna Center. And this is uh, yeah for advanced technology. And this is in, again, Pune. Okay, So these uh, centers are there. Raj Ramanna Center for Advanced Technology in Pune. Uh, so these three institutes will be playing an important role. Okay, Institute of Plasma Research, Gandhinagar, Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, Pune and Raj Navanna Center for Advanced Technology, Pune. Okay, so these three institutes are there, which will be working with uh, on this project. So this is all about your LEGO project. Uh, uh, when we talk about uh, what is the significance of this project, uh, so see, up till now, we have observed the universe from the electromagnetic spectrum, okay, using the electromagnetic spectrum. 
that is we have observed whatever things are there in in this is electromagnetic spectrum we have observed the universe from the perspective of the light ray visible light, light ray okay uh, we have used infrared rays you know the sophia observatory which is there sophia observatory it is using this uh, infrared uh, technology sophia observatory it's a joint project of nasa and german space agency okay so it is using infrared rays to study universe okay x rays are used to study see basically human eyes can see only the light rays so with the light rays whatever things are observed we can see only that but beyond this there are also many things which are there into this space like i am sitting only i can see which is visible to my eyes using the visible light uh, spectrum but there are many things which are there in in the periphery of me there are many waves and all are there which i cannot see okay uh, so that can be seen by using the other spectrum that can be used by seeing infrared spectrum that can be seen by using uh, x ray spectrum so up till now we are using these things to vis to watch all these things which are happening in our periphery but the issue is that uh, this electromagnetic waves uh, they suffer from certain defects okay so defects and is that ki whenever they pass through any clouds and all okay uh, they are absorbed so some components of that waves are absorbed basically some information is lost okay when i talk about the gravitational waves if we will be observing the universe with the help of the gravitational wave gravitational waves are unaffected they are unreflected they are unaffected so basically what is exactly there in the universe that can be exactly seen with the help of the gravitational waves okay so it it will be a very big landmark thing because now whatever we are we are seeing in the universe that we are seeing with the help of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum but there are issues that the information gets lost because of the absorption of the data reflection of the data but if we will be using gravitational waves they are unaffected okay so that is the importance of uh, this particular thing a gravitational waves now when i talk about india what are the other international projects in which india is playing an important role okay so first is the lego project where india is playing an important role the second project in which india actually played a very important role uh, that is in the project of large uh, hadron collider hadron collider now what is this large hadron collider uh, basically this uh, tries to observe fundamental particles of the universe okay like we have protons and all the fundamental particles which are there in the universe that are being observed by this collider yeah so what are the other experiments international experiments um, in which india is playing an important role i'll just admit the participants so few important uh, international uh, experiments in which india is playing an important role so the very first one we have just now seen is the lego the second one is um, large hadron collider and mention it over here large hadron h the second part of the presentation large hadron collider uh, so this large hadron collider it is uh, buried underneath 27 km and it spans across like it's underneath that is underground and this is it spans around 27 km across switzerland and uh, france okay so basically uh, the objective of this large hadron collider is to uh, detect the fundamental part particles of the universe okay so that is being done and indian scientists uh, scientists they have played a very important role in this entire experiment the second important thing which india is a part of is the very famous international project international thermo nuclear uh, sorry international uh, yeah thermo nuclear experimental researcher now uh, what is this okay reactor international right it international thermo nuclear uh, thermo nuclear experimental reactor so what is this uh, reactor it's it is in france and many countries are playing an important role in its formation and they are planning to make a tokamak now what is a tokamak so the aim is to build toka i'll write the spelling yeah tokamak now tokamak it's like it is basically on the principle of sun 
So we know that China is doing experimentation, right, with, res with respect to making an artificial sun. So that is the same thing. The Tokamak is a very big nuclear reactor where important countries are playing a role where they are trying to create a nuclear reactor. See, in nuclear reactor, whatever nuclear plants are there, the principle that is used is what nuclear pigeon is used. Uranium, it's being bombarded with the neutrons. And then what happens? Uh, the mass of the uranium is reduced and that is converted into energy. But what is happening in sun? In sun, nuclear fusion takes place. Where we see that ki two hydrogen atoms, they combine to form helium nuclei. Okay? And in this process, what happens? A lot of energy is being produced inside the sun. right? So this they are trying to make in France. Tokamak, okay. So they are trying to make this Tokamak in France and important countries. I'll mention seven countries are there. Uh, in that European Union, it it is uh, doing the funding. European Union is doing the funding of forty five percent of the project cost is borne by European Union, which are the other important. So European Union group of the European countries. The other important countries into this project are India is there, USA is there. China is there, India, US, China, yeah, Japan is there, uh, yes, one, two, three, four, five, one more is there, that is your Russia, okay, so uh, these all, India, USA, China, Japan, yeah, and one more, South Korea, seven are there, yeah, so one is European Union and remaining six countries are there, so 45% of the project cost of this Tokamak will be borne by European Union, remaining that is, what, 9.1% each, will be borne by these countries, India, USA, China, Japan, Russia, South Korea. So ITER, it's a very important international thermonuclear experimental reactor, which is being built in France. The aim is to build Tokamak. Tokamak like China is trying to build an artificial sun. So on the similar line, they're trying to make a nuclear reactor. And in this nuclear reactor, instead of using the principle of nuclear fission, what principle they are using? They are using the principle of sun. How the energy is produced in the sun with the principle of nuclear fusion. Where two hydrogen atoms are combining into making of helium and subsequent energy is released in this process. So that they are trying to do it in this uh, nuclear reactor. And India is a part of this international project. Okay, So these are the two important projects. LIGO, we have already seen. Large Hadron uh, Collider, this is in France underneath project in order to study the fundamental particles, Indian scientists have played a very important role. The third thing, okay, now we all know that International Space Station is there, right? International Space Station, it was uh, launched in 1998, okay? International Space Station, it has five space agencies. It's a collaboration of uh, five space agencies. India is not there. So which uh, five space agencies are there? USA ka NASA is there. Russia is there, Russia ka Roscosmos is there, Roscosmos is there. So, USA ka NASA, Russia ka Roscosmos, Japan ka JAXA, J A X N, uh, European Space Agency is there, and Canadian Space Agency. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Five space agencies are there USA, Russia, Japan, your European Space Agency, and your Can Canadian Space Agency. Okay, so these are there in International Space Station. India is not there, okay? Now, this International Space Station, it is assumed that it is going to uh, stop functioning by this decade, okay? By the end of this decade, by 2030, it will be stopped functioning. And it is said that okay, the new space station, which is being planned out, it is, uh, the, it is being revealed that the okay, agencies are uh, trying to make India as a partner. So it is expected that into the new International Space Station, which will be in the next decade, okay? The present one, it will stop by this decade. So in the next decade, the new International Space Station will be there and India will be a part of this space station. Presently, India is not a part of the current International Space Station. Remember this, it is expected that India will be a partner in the new space station, okay? So this is again a very important collaboration of India at the international level. The next important collaboration of India is, I'll just write over here, the last one, is the fourth one uh, that is um, Indian Neutrino Observatory. Indian Neutrino Observatory. Observe. 
the uh, this uh, project indian neutrino, neutrino observatory this was expected proposed project to be built in india so in, in this is an international observatory in order to observe the neutrinos okay new uh, so like we have an observatory for gravitational wave detection on a similar manner for the detection of neutrino this observatory will be there and it is expected that the observatory will be in thani that is in tamil nadu okay thani in tamil nadu the observatory will be there just a second i need to open the door someone has to put it in. neutrino observatory yeah so indian neutrino observatory uh, this is a proposed project to be built in tamil nadu that is thani uh, but here the issue is that um, there is a widespread protest from the localites that this will be affecting the western ghats okay western ghats uh, and as a result the ecologically uh, eco sensitive zones and all it will be covering that area so it is being as of now uh, not uh, no progress is there into this project but again if it, if this is being introduced in the country because this will be 1200 uh, meter deep project in deep caves this caverns will be built deep caves will be there and the project will be implemented so if india is also uh, successful into this project india will emerge as a, one of the uh, important nations with respect to high profile scientific facility okay so this is all about the today's session i hope the things are clear uh, you can use all this information into your answer writing uh, which international projects are there of which India is a part. So you should know about all these projects, a large hadron collider, international thermonuclear experimental reactor, your international space station, probability that India could be a part of it, and Indian neutrino observatory. The issue is going on, but we'll assume that, we'll see that he subsequently it will be uh, uh, developed in the country, okay? And the last one is your LIGO. So uh, these projects are with respect to the advanced scientific facility, okay? So I think, I hope that the things are clear. If you have any doubts, you may ask the doubts.